for years, I uh, did photo realism. Over the years, I relaxed more. Did surrealist work, loosened up more. Got stuck to a certain point, and I had to reflect back. Uh, a lot of what really helped me, um, my partner Jennifer, as you know, um, she gave me an incredible challenge. She asked me, well, what side of lava is that I do? And it really stuck me, I thought, well, what would I do? And for like six months, I didn't really do anything. I mean, I sketched a little bit, and kind of wavered back and forth between what I'd been doing and trying to figure out what I was going to do. I recall seeing a room full of Picassos, and Brock, and Juan Gris, Cubist artists. And I looked at that and I immediately, like, this is what I want to do. These are gorgeous. Like, this is what I want to do. And I realized that I wanted to make beautiful paintings that weren't familiar with, for everybody. You know, like, everybody can look at a barn landscape and say, that's a barn landscape. It looks like a barn. Everybody recognized that. So they walk away with the same impression. They saw a barn landscape and that's what it is. When you look at abstract work, there's a whole different reality being made. I have had the pleasure and the opportunity to meet some of these people like Peter Max and actually speak with him. And we got to chat it. And he gave me really good advice to, to grow on. And one of the things he told me was is that if you're not constantly growing up as an artist, then you've gotten stuck in a rut. Like if you do the same thing for 30 years, you're not really an artist, you're a manufacturer. So I started looking at some of my influences, things changed for me. And some of my strongest influences were people like Lucian Freud, Francis Bacon, um, Louise Nevelson. Francis Bacon certainly has been a, a great influence. I've always really appreciated the abstractness of what he does, the flat planes. So I started taking into consideration the things that I admired about these artists' works. Uh, with somebody like Francis Bacon, he has these real thin washes where the canvas sort of bleeds through and you can see that. But then he puts a very pastel, thick paint right next to it. And that starts to build a visual texture. So I started thinking through what it was that drew my eyes to these artists, whether it be a realist like Lucian Freud or Vermeer, as say opposed to be like Louise Nevelson or Jasper Johns, or say Anthony Caro, the sculptor. And I started thinking about those concepts that I found myself lured to visually. And I started asking myself, well, you know, is it hacking to utilize some of those things? Or is it, there, you know, really we all covet things we see, and how do we make that our own? So in combination of using these different techniques, because it's not like I'm making up a new technique. It's not like I've made up a new color. It's not like I've made up a new practice. So when you're building something new, you're really building off a foundation before you, a history of what's prior to what you're doing. And how do you make that your own? How do you keep it in a contemporary sense, contemporary with what's going on around you in the now?